Welcome everyone. This is our first uh, presentation of this kind. Our goal is to host a presentation about getting access to mental health care um, for various counties in the coming months. And uh, Baltimore County has agreed to be our pilot area. So thank you so much uh, to our friends and colleagues in Baltimore County for helping us to pull this together. Our presenters today are Heather Dewey um, from the Baltimore County Health Department, Courtney Blair from the Baltimore County Public Schools, and Jamie Eversell Clark from NAMI Metropolitan Baltimore. And each of them will be sharing a bit about uh, their services and resources that currently exist in the Baltimore County community um, that we can all use to tap into taking better care of our mental wellness. Before we jump into their presentations, though, we do want to share a bit with you about the Mental Health Association of Maryland. That is where myself and my coworker, Tiffany Thomas, are coming from. And the Mental Health Association of Maryland has been around for over 100 years. It's a nonprofit, and it really focuses on addressing the mental health needs of Marylanders of all ages through programs that educate the public um, and increase understanding and provide resources. Uh, we have a public policy arm that works to improve care and outcomes for people who are utilizing the mental health system. And we help to monitor the quality of services received by folks who are using the mental health system in Maryland. So that's uh, what we do in a nutshell. Next slide. Uh, we do have two arms, as I mentioned, our advocacy arm and our, advo or and our education arm, rather. Um, in the education realm, we have a Children's Mental Health Matters campaign, which Tiffany is the manager of and has some very exciting stuff moving forward with. Tiffany, would you like to give a brief summary of what's coming up with the Children's Mental Health Matters campaign? Um, in May, the first week of May, um, is our annual Children's Mental Health Matters Awareness Week. Um, and you can learn more about that on our web website, childrensmentalhealthmatters.org. Um, we have a lot of really exciting things coming up, and um, we ask schools and community organizations to sign up to become champions for children's mental health, um, and we provide lots of resources for, for everyone to do that for free. Um, if you'd like to learn more, you can go to our website or reach out to me about that, um, and it's just a really exciting time for all of us to wrap around children and families to help them feel supported and feel like they have what they need to take care of themselves, especially during um, these times and moving ahead. So there's lots to look forward to. Awesome. Thank you. We also do um, education and programming around adulthood in general uh, and how that intersects with mental health and mental wellness. Um, and we have a specific program for older adult needs called the Older Adults Vibrant Minds Program. That's where I'm joining you from today, um, specifically our Baltimore County arm, the Vibrant Aging Peers Program. My name is Casey Saylor, and I'm the Older Adult Project Manager uh, with that project. And so um, if older adults, mental wellness is something you're interested in, uh, and you have a computer, I invite you to learn a bit more about the subject by going to our website, uh, www.mdaging.org. And if you don't have a computer, um, but you would like a copy of our Mental Health in Later Life guidebook, I have a copy of it right here for those who can see me on camera. It is a wonderful uh, full color publication that talks about most things regarding the brain and how it changes as we get older in ways that we can keep it healthy. Um, we give them out for free. There's a lot to learn from this book. So um, either way, if you would like a copy of it, please reach out to us. For those who are over the phone, I invite you to give us a call um, and reserve your guidebook. And the phone number to do that is 443-901-550. And that will connect you to our um, admin team. And you're welcome to leave a voicemail just with your name and address. And we will get that guidebook out the door to you in the mail. Uh, no cost. All right. And the last educational program I want to share with you guys is our Healthy New Moms program. Uh, there's a lot of wonderful information about um, mental wellness after you have a baby. Um, or as you're getting ready to have a baby. And mental wellness around the fatherhood aspect of that as well. 
Uh, Tiffany, can you please remind us what the website for Healthy New Moms is? HealthyNewMoms.org. HealthyNewMoms.org, that's nice and easy. All right, for those of you who are joining us um, over Zoom today, we will put the links to these websites in the chat box for you so you can easily pull them uh, and access them at your leisure. On the advocacy side, um, we are doing a lot of advocacy work right now. Um, it is legislative season, right? So we're busy. Um, but we do have some targeted coalitions that are going on. And so I'll just briefly tell you about them. If advocacy is something you're interested in and you're interested in getting involved in any of these coalitions, we invite you to reach out to us and we'll um, you know, talk to you and help to get you involved as you're looking to be. So the coalitions that we have, we have a general behavioral health coalition. Um, and that is a very large group of providers, consumers, um, and other stakeholders from the mental health system who work together to try to bring better access to care um, and promote uh, client rights and things like that. The Maryland Coalition on Mental Health and Aging specifically focuses on uh, older adults' needs when it comes to mental wellness, whether those are within aging systems or mental health systems. Um, Children's Behavioral Health Coalition is doing some wonderful work around helping children to access mental health care. And the Maryland Behavioral Health Criminal Justice Partnership um, is looking at some innovative ways of uh, addressing mental health needs within the criminal justice system. So those are very, very brief summaries of each of those coalitions. Uh, if you have a computer and want to learn more about any of them, we invite you to go to our website. There are entire write-ups on them and ways you can get involved. Uh, that is www.mhamd.org. I actually don't have For the Mental Health Association of Maryland. Again, if you're joining us on the phone and you don't have a computer and you want to get involved, our phone number is 443-901-1550. And leave us a message with your name and number and what you're interested in getting involved in. A couple other things that, man, we're busy <laughs> at the Mental Health Association. We're busy here. Um, so a couple other things that we're working on right now. Uh, mental health first aid in Maryland. Uh, if uh, you are interested in having a mental health first aid training, uh, either for yourself or for your workplace, please reach out to us uh, and we can help connect you with a trainer in Maryland. Um, Engage With is also a training program that we have. It's, it specifically looks at older adults mental health needs in the context of long-term care. So this is a training program for people who are in nursing homes, the, the staff rather, who work in nursing homes to help them better work with the older adults that they serve. Uh, we do have the consumer quality team, which as I mentioned before, provides that oversight element of uh, talking to individuals who are using services, uh, mental health services in the state and asking them about their experience and really checking in about how things are going and helping to give the state and providers feedback on how services are working for the people that participate in them. And the path forward for mental health and substance use. Unfortunately, this is an initiative that I personally am not too uh, familiar with, um, but it is doing some innovative work around promoting uh, policy and, and structural things around mental health and substance use. Tiffany, do you have anything to add specifically about that initiative? I am not working on that initiative, but if anyone has questions about it, we do encourage you to reach out to the organization or view our website for more information as well. Great, thank you. So Tiffany is going to share about some of the publications that we have available because we have many. <laughs> that guidebook is just one of them and we give them out for free. Um, so Tiffany, go ahead. So oh, um, the Mental Health Association of Maryland provides free informational resources, which are currently available on our website by download, or you can request by mail. Um, on our website, which I'm going to show you in just a second, you can download those as PDFs, or you can use our publication order form. Um, and if you have any questions about how to navigate this process, you can email uh, info at, at mhamd.org. So I'm going to show you this little video here um, that will show you how to navigate this process. So when you visit our website, this is our homepage, and what you'll do is go up here, um, and we have 
lots of pages that you can navigate on your own. But you'll go up here at the top right here at publications um, and you'll click that, um, which will take you to our publications page. And um, it will navigate you down here um, to what you'll see is the same thing I just told you. You can download them by mail. Um, and there's a link right here to our publication order form. If you click that, you can go um, straight there to download the thing, um, the items. But you can filter our publications by age group, um, or you can filter them by language. Some of our resources are available in Spanish. You can also search by subject here. So if you type in any subject related to mental health, you can see if we have a publication on that. I typed in depression here. If you hit submit, um, it will, you can find some resources on that. If you'd like to reset, you can hit that and it'll re download the page, um, refresh it. You can scroll through and down, um, hit download and it'll bring up a resource. To download that resource, you hit this button here and it'll download it to your computer. This is one of our telemental health fact sheets because we're all in the middle of telemental health right now and doing televisits. Um, we have lots of resources on various subjects. Um, the one downloading now is on bipolar disorder, um, but we have lots of resources on stress, on for moms, all kinds. You can browse through those. And again, if you want to download that to your computer, you can hit that. There's also a print option. Um, so we're going to scroll back up here to the top and go to the publication order form and that will open to a new page. And when you're browsing through here, it will list all of the publications that we have um, in stock. If for some reason we don't have it in stock and you request it, someone on our team will reach out to you and say we don't have it available. It is categorized by um, age group. So the ones here at the top are for children. So we have our adult publications, um, and we can request items up to a quantity of 10. And so you'll just go through, select the ones that you want. And at the bottom, after you go through everything, um, it will um, eventually get there in just a second. You add your name, you and your information, and there's a submit um, button at the bottom. So in order to get to that page, um, if you can't find it when you get to our, go to our homepage, it's mhamd.org publications. For our children's publications, um, we do have them available on our MHAMD website, but we also have them available on our children's mental health matters.org website. And that's the easiest way to find them. And that's the way we prefer that you would download them. And this isn't a video, this is just a screenshot. So you can find those by going to childrensmentalhealthmatters.org. And when you go to the home page, this toolbar right here at the top will be there. And you can go to resources and there'll be a drop down right here um, that says downloads. And it'll take you to this page and each of these right here toggle down and you can find um, resources for each of these. And um, you can download them and print them or you can go right here to order publications, which is a very similar form, and you can request those items there. Um, those requests will come straight to me and to our office, but we do encourage you um, to download them and print them yourself if you're able. That way you can get those resources immediately and start using them. Um, and to finish up, we would love for you to connect with us in various ways. Um, again, you can go on our website and learn more about what we do across the state, and you can schedule a training and learn more about our specific programs um, and order some of our resources. If you have any questions, reach out to us. You can follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. We are on Instagram, too. I forgot to add that here. Our children's campaign also has its own social media um, pages, and you can um, find those on our website, but we're really glad that you're here today. And now um, we're going to turn it over to Heather, who is here from the Baltimore County Health Department. I do want to mention, um, I'm about to put the link to our landing page for this event today. The resources that we're sharing with you will also be available on this landing page um, after we're finished today. Um, so please feel free to download your own copies of them from that page as well. And I'll put that in the chat box now. Go ahead, Heather. 
Awesome. Thank you guys for having us here today. So my name is Heather Dewey, and I am a social worker with the Baltimore County Department of Health. And the Department of Health is quite large and has many programs, but I'm specifically with what's called the Bureau of Behavioral Health. Um, so for those of you on the line, the Bureau of Behavioral Health is what's known as a local behavioral health authority. Every jurisdiction or county in the city in Maryland has an organization like ours. And the goal of our organization is we really work to oversee, manage, and coordinate the mental health and substance use providers that are billing Medicaid. Um, so those are the providers, folks who have medical assistance, those providers are the folks that we work with and we oversee. Um, but in addition to that system of care, we also have many grant funded programs and ways that we can connect directly with the community to help provide support. And so we wanted to let you know about a couple of those. So again, with the um, Bureau of Behavioral Health, we want to strengthen and sustain a safe and effective behavioral health system. Um, and for those of you on the line, when we say behavioral health, we're talking about mental health and substance use treatment. So the two of those together are what we call behavioral health. And we really want to create a system in Baltimore County that's accessible. And so we're going to let you know a few ways you guys can access care today. And that also is really meaningful and, and promotes wellness and recovery. In Baltimore County, we actually have nearly 200,000 people as of December 2019 that were eligible for Medicaid. So it's a good group of people that we're hoping to make sure the system is working for. Um, so where can you find help? How can we help connect you? So first, we have lots of individual programs that we oversee, everything from early childhood services for our zero to five-year-olds through geriatric services for our older groups as well. We offer flex funds, um, which is funding that's available to support youth or families who are engaged in outpatient mental health treatment who have medical assistance to help with things like eviction prevention, BGE turnoff, and also connection with things we call pro-social behaviors, so summer camps, tutoring, things that would help a youth who has a mental health diagnosis and is in treatment keep doing well or improve. Um, we also have different services in the community around substance abuse screening, information, and referral. Um, and so that program, which typically have been in person, has moved to telehealth. So we actually have a number I'm going to give you where you can call in and you can find where to go for screening. So there's such a broad array of services. We really wanted to see what would be the easiest information to give folks on the phone who, I think last I looked, there were 44 of you and you may have families and friends that you're impacting that is larger than number. What is the quickest way to find out how to access things? So this is a great point. You can take out your cell phone and take a picture of these next slides that I'm gonna show. Um, this will be recorded and I will put the information in the chat, but you're welcome to take this with you now. So first is our Baltimore County Crisis Response Services, or BCCRS. So many of you may know Baltimore County Crisis Response as the mobile crisis team. So you can call the hotline 24-7 every day, the hotline being 410-931-2214, if you or someone you know is having a mental health crisis or some sort of behavioral crisis, um, and you guys need support. This is a great number to save in your cell phone. I've had to call it for neighbors, for friends through my lifetime, um, even as a social worker to have somebody come and help respond and support. And so it's a really great resource to have. But what many folks don't know is Baltimore County Crisis Response actually has a broader array of services that are available. And these services are available for youth and adults. So it's the entire lifespan in Baltimore County, regardless of your insurance. So if you have medical assistance, if you have Cigna, if you have Blue Cross Blue Shield or private insurance, this is available for you at no cost. Um, so one of the supports we have is in-home intervention team. So if you or someone you know maybe needs a little more support at home, you're having trouble connecting the services, this is a group um, from Baltimore County Crisis Response, a clinician who can come out and help provide support. But we also have an urgent care clinic. So the urgent care clinic can actually see folks within 24 to 48 hours of the, the call, and you would call the same hotline number. The 24-7 number is the number for everything. You call and say, I need an urgent care clinic, and it's almost like a patient first for, for mental health. So let's say you're trying to connect with an outpatient provider and you're going to run out of meds before your first appointment, or something's happening and things are escalated and we're trying to avoid inpatient, but we, we can connect with a provider in the community. The urgent care clinic can be a great 
bridge option. So again, this is where there may be a gap for folks um, to be able to come and access. They have child and adolescent psychiatry, adult psychiatry, mental health clinicians that can help work with you to, to manage the immediate need and then make sure that you're linked with something long-term. So it's not meant to be a long-term um, support, but something that can bridge a gap. We talked about the mobile crisis team and Baltimore County has what's called a co-responder model. Um, so in Baltimore County, if Baltimore County police are gonna go out to support somebody who may have a mental health crisis or behavioral health crisis occurring, they will be able to respond with a trained and licensed clinician who can go out with the police. These are also specific police officers who are trained in a model, um, crisis intervention teams, um, and have an increased knowledge of mental health. And so we do that co-responder model so that we're putting mental health treatment first. Um, the goal is to make sure that person is safe and is able to access treatment. And we can go out with the police department for that. And then Baltimore County Crisis Response also will help facilitate community education events. Some of that may be virtual right now with COVID. I know hopefully folks are getting in for vaccine appointments and we can turn you know, that corner to be able to be in person, but they can come out and do community education and events. Something else that Baltimore County Crisis Response will do is crisis debriefing. So if there's some sort of significant event or loss, um, for instance, a death by suicide or, um, some traumatic loss at a workplace, they can actually also work with that agency or that family or that school to help do debriefing services. So to be able to process that event in the immediate moment and then make sure there's some longer term care to connect with. So feel free to take a picture of the slide and save that number in your phone. It can be very helpful. The other number to save that we highly recommend is our 41088-REACH. And so that's our REACH line. This is a phone line that folks can call from 8.30 a.m. to 12 a.m. midnight, Monday through Saturday, if you're looking to connect with any sort of support or treatment around substance misuse or recovery. So this could be folks who are calling for themselves. Perhaps you have questions about treatment. What does it mean to go into treatment? How do you manage this with work? What, what are my treatment options? It could also be people calling for their loved ones or the people they care about. And the great thing is you can call this line and ask your questions and you're gonna get a person who has lived experience in recovery. So someone um, that's in a peer role who has been through treatment, who is now in recovery and can help navigate that model. So it's a great number to have if you're calling with somebody who maybe isn't sure if there's um, substance misuse needs or that they even need treatment. They can talk to someone who's been there and been through it. And you're not gonna get a stigmatizing response. You're not gonna be made to feel bad or that you're not doing the right thing or what the right thing is. It's a conversation that can help connect you to treatment. Um, and other things as well, such as support groups, peer support, again, family support, and harm reduction. So this is a number, another great um, slide to take a picture of and to also save in your phone. And then this is just our general helpline. So we um, always say call the Baltimore County Department of Health Behavioral Health Helpline. And that number is 410-887-3828. And so this is a number anyone can call if you just want to say, what's available? Um, Heather, you talked about these grant funded resources and I want to know which ones I may be eligible for or my child may be eligible for or my grandparent may be eligible for. Um, and there was a lot of people on the line, so we didn't get to talk about it. Or Heather, you mentioned flex funds. I want to know more. You can call this line Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And we have a team um, here who helps answer that line and will help connect you to services. Um, so again, anyone can call this. This is not a crisis line. If you are in crisis or if you're with someone in crisis, again, we recommend calling Baltimore County Crisis Response. But if you just have questions about connecting to treatment, where to find help, this is a great number to call. So again, that's 410-887-3828. And because we oversee the providers who bill medical assistance for mental health and substance use treatment, this is also the number you can call if you wanted a list of clinics or to know what clinics are in your zip code, what services are available. We can help connect you with that so you will know who is licensed and approved to be providing those services so you can get quality care. And then this is just a general resource we want to put out with folks. This, this time has been stressful for all of us. We are over a year for a lot of us working from home. Um, 
some of us are still trying to get vaccines and haven't gotten there yet. It's, it's just been a really challenging time. And so we do want to let folks know um, that there are other options for calling, especially around suicide prevention um, or the crisis text line. So these are two other or three other options um, for the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. You can call the 1-800-237-8255 or there's an online chat. Um, and even for some of our youth, again, all of these numbers can be called by our kids too. You know, if you have somebody who's young and has questions, please have them call us. Um, but if your kids are like me, I'm a texter and that's okay. There's also the National Crisis Text Line, which can be a great option. And so if you or anyone you know ever wants to chat with someone, if you're feeling a certain kind of way, you can text the word HOME to 741-741 and someone will reach out to connect with you. And so this is just our general information and I'm gonna pass it over to our next speaker. Um, thank you guys for being here. Uh, pass it over to Courtney Blair at Baltimore County Public Schools. Hi, I'm sorry, Heather, I just thank you. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, there was a, a typo in one of the numbers um, for the suicide hotline. Can you please repeat that number? It's written correctly on the slide, but you had said it incorrectly. So I just want oh, to make sure I'm that so sorry. our friends on the phone get the correct number. Absolutely. Thank you for noticing that. Um, so the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is 1-800-273-8255. Did I say it right that time, thank Casey? You. Yes, thank you. Sorry. Thank you for that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, the, the tech life and the reading of slides. I appreciate your patience. So I'm gonna formally transition it over to Courtney Blair, who's a great partner at Baltimore County Public Schools and has lots of great information to share. Thank you guys. Am I muted or can you hear me? <laughs> good, okay, great. Hi, good morning, everybody. Thank you, Heather. Thank you everyone for allowing me to be here today. Um, Courtney Blair, I am the mental health supervisor for Baltimore County Public Schools. Uh, I've been with Baltimore County for about seven years. I was formerly a school social worker, so um, also social worker by trade. Uh, my experience is largely in the Dundalk Edgemere area where I was as a, a school social worker for those years prior to my new position. So I want to talk to you a little bit about some of our really important resources. Um, please know that a lot of these are available, but then there's also specific um, resources by school. So we have about 170, give or take, schools in Baltimore County. We're one of the largest counties, um, I'm sorry, school systems in Maryland. So a lot of schools. And um, so just keep that in mind. So I'm sharing the website now. Hopefully you can see it okay. And this is going to be a great resource for any parent, anyone interested or um, grandparent, uh, has a student that goes to Baltimore County Public Schools. So we have so much information. I know with the re-entry and our hybrid schedule and virtual learning, there's so much information that's coming out probably so quickly. And you may have a lot of questions, which makes a lot of sense. So I would reference, um, if you go to um, bcps.org, this is the homepage you'll see, and we have kind of that running banner. But a lot of information, you'll see this orange kind of line across, a lot of drop-down menus. So I would encourage you and invite you to explore it. Um, one of the really cool things, if you see all the way at the top of the screen, it says select a school. So if you have a student that attends any school in Baltimore County, you can select on this dropdown. I'm just gonna pick Arbutus Elementary because it's right here. But you can find the information specific to your school, the website, um, the staff directory. So if you're interested in reaching out to your, your student's teacher, you should be able to do that. Let's go to grade three. Um, there should be some email addresses that pop up. Yep, so if you had a question for Ms. Vogel, you could shoot her an email. Um, what we encourage parents and caregivers to do, if you have a specific concern about a class or a content area, you reach out to that particular teacher first. Um, if there is a social, emotional, or mental health concern, you can reach out to the school counselor. Um, the counseling information should also be linked on the uh, staff directory page. If not, you can always call the school. I know the secretaries are in, um, so someone should be there to answer your call or return your email. Um, let's see what else. Oh, and I, I'm happy to say that in most of our, all of our high schools and middle schools, there is an assigned school social worker that's there full time. In the elementary schools, we have social workers that are usually um, kind of part-time in those schools offering supports. So there are resources available if your student does have mental health needs. There are support staff, so there's school counselors, there's the school social workers, 
There's also school psychologists, and they're usually um, cover multiple schools as well. They're still available, but unfortunately, um, we just need more of them. So they just have to kind of visit lots of schools, but those folks are available if needed. And then I'm happy to say too, we have community mental health partnerships. So we have, prior to the pandemic, our schools would form partnerships with community providers. And then those folks who had partnerships would come into the schoolhouse and provide mental health services to those students who were on um, that particular therapist's caseload. So it kind of made it easier for students to access services um, in the schoolhouse and made it easier for parents. So they didn't have to drive their, their, their student to and from appointments. So we're really happy about that right now because of the pandemic, of course, services are being offered um, via telemental health. And that's continuing right now. Unfortunately, our mental health providers aren't permitted to be back in the building yet. So hoping eventually that um, can start again. But um, our school counselors, school social workers can all make referrals if needed as well. So if you have a concern now, please don't hesitate to reach out. Referrals can still be made and we can get those services rolling depending on your um, insurance needs, but those resources are still available. I'm happy to say in our 170 so schools, we have about, we have about 140 schools that have partnerships with our mental health providers. So uh, if you are interested in that, I would reach out to the your particular school and check with the probably the counseling department chair or maybe an administrator and they will know if there's a partnership that's established um, if you would like to get things started so that way when we are back in person or your student attends in person they're already connected with a therapist and they can start receiving those services in the schoolhouse um, i'm going to jump back over there is also a really great resource that we created as a result of um, this virtual environment that we're in if i can get there let's see um, so in a search bar, I'm going to put virtual calming room, and I'm going to put this link in the chat when I'm done sharing my screen, but I want to make sure you guys um, can see it. So this is a resource that was developed by various folks, um, various folks on a team, and we wanted to have a resource for students, for staff, for families to use as a resource for just coping. So some of these are just fun um, sites and resources and activities for students, again, students, families, staff members, just to use to kind of relax, to debrief. Um, a lot of really cool videos, like if we go to this mindfulness and movement. Um, again, I invite you to explore this. You know, some that are more geared towards kids, uh, younger kids, intermediate, um, and then also for adults. So just a lot of great resources. And then if you happen to know of additional resources you'd like us to add, you could always fill out this um, kind of survey at the bottom. Just give us some feedback because we meet quarterly to kind of update these. So we also have a resource tab. Um, if, you know, if folks are in crisis and need some of those mental health supports right away, those are available. Um, Parent University is another really great resource for parents to know about. They offer workshops um, and resources for parents. So I would really encourage you to explore that website. It's also with um, connected to the, the BCPS main page as well, but you can reference it there. Rep um, re reference it there. And then also our uh, school climate page has a lot of resources on the web page as well. So a lot of really cool things. And one more I'm going to show you and then I'll stop. Virtual tours is one of my favorite, but it's a great way to kind of escape and kind of see the world virtually. So um, I really love that. Anyway, so please reach out if you have any questions. I'm happy to help. Uh, I would encourage maybe the first step if you have a mental health concern for your student, um, you can reach out to, of course, your primary care doctor first, but also if you want to reach out to the Baltimore County um, school-based staff, I would encourage that as well. You can always reach out to me. I'll put my email in the chat. I oversee services for the entire county, so um, I'm happy to help, but might direct you there first if I don't have an immediate answer for you. So thank you so much. Let me figure out how to stop sharing my screen. Pause share. I'm not as familiar with Zoom as I am with other stop share. Okay. So thank you so much. I'm gonna turn it over to Jamie Clark with NAMI. Thank you so much, Courtney. Um, thanks for sharing those web pages too. I'm going to be visiting that virtual tour page. That looked really cool. So thank you for sharing that. 
Um, hi, everyone. My name is Jamie Clark. I'm the Senior Director of Programs at NAMI Metro Baltimore. I've been with the organization for a little over five years now, and I'm really excited to be here with you today, connecting with community members. Wish we were in person, but hopefully sometime soon. Um, so I'm going to be giving you just a quick overview of NAMI programs, focusing in on our education and support groups. Um, there are a ton more programs that I'm not going to be able to cover today, so I will be sure to put our website in the chat box for you. Um, NAMI is the National Alliance on Mental Illness, and we are the nation's largest grassroots mental health organization. We're really dedicated to improving the lives of people who live with mental health conditions and their family members. And so here in uh, Baltimore, we are the NAMI Metropolitan Baltimore Affiliate. We serve Baltimore City and Baltimore County. Um, we have free education, support, and advocacy programs that are really geared towards people with mental illness and their families. We serve over 9,500 individuals in the city and county each year. And we found that, um, you know, that number is only growing with the result of COVID and the racial trauma from this past year. Um, and so we're really looking to be a resource for all of you that are here today. So like I said, I'm going to give a quick overview of these signature programs. Um, what you need to know about NAMI programs is that our, our services are non-clinical. So all of our programs are peer-led, delivered by volunteers who have been thoroughly trained to teach classes or run support groups. And all of our volunteers either live with the mental health condition and are doing well in their recovery, or they've cared for a family member or loved one who has experienced a mental health condition. So our classes are a very structured way to get involved with our organization to receive that more educational piece about mental health. Peer to Peer is our eight week course for people living with mental health conditions. Um, then we, on the flip side, we have the Family to Family course for family members of people living with mental health conditions. And NAMI Basics is a six week course for parents and caregivers of adolescents and children who might be experiencing behavioral health conditions, whether they have a diagnosis yet or not. And then on the support group side, we, we serve a similar um, population. So our NAMI Connection support group is open to anyone living with a mental health condition who's really looking to get group wisdom and some extra support for what they're going through. It's a really great way to get together with people who have been there and, and might understand um, the, you know, the ins and outs of what you're going through, even if they might be living with a different diagnosis than you. Um, our groups are all operating virtually right now, of course. Um, we have a group that meets every Saturday morning from 1030 to 12, and then we have a group that meets first and third Wednesday evenings from 6 to 730. Um, we also have a young adult connection support group. Um, you know, if anyone in the room here is between ages 18 and 39, often some of the challenges that we face in this age group is a little bit different from, um, from older adults. And so we opened to this group as a way to help young adults get together and talk about what it's like navigating the workforce, college, grad school while living with a mental health condition. Um, that group meets on second and fourth Wednesdays from 6 to 7.30 p.m. And then for family members and loved ones, we use the term family very loosely here at NAMI. So if you are a family member or a friend or loved one of someone living with a mental health condition and you're involved in supporting them or trying to help them access treatment, this group is a really great way to get together with other people who might have similar experiences to you. And that family support group meets virtually every Thursday evening from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Um, I will also put the link in the chat for registration for our support groups. I always recommend that you check out a support group first before signing up for a class because it's a drop-in basis. You can check out and see if it's the support that you might need um, before committing to a longer-term class. So I will be sure to put that link in the chat as well. We also have a couple of signature presentation programs that we deliver in the community NAMI Ending the Silence is um, really geared towards middle and high school age students, parents, and faculty that gives an overview of mental health symptoms and conditions in those age ranges. Um, if, if you uh, are a parent or you're looking for support in your child's school, feel free to connect with us. Let us know. Um, we will be happy to reach out to Courtney or the social worker at that school to try to bring a presentation to your community. And NAMI in our own voice is a presentation program really designed to break down the stigma about mental health, where two volunteers share their personal experiences of living with mental health conditions, 
Um, and those presentations are really great for any audience. Um, it's always good for everyone to hear about mental health and hear that people can and do recover and do well in their recovery. Um, just a quick shout out that NAMI Walks is uh, virtual this year, um, which is always interesting. It was virtual last year too, but it's coming up on May 22nd. Feel free to visit the website namiwalks.org slash Maryland to register and join us to support mental health. And here's our contact info. We would love to hear from you. We operate a helpline Monday through Friday, nine to five. You can call in, access resources, um, see if the NAMI programs that I talked about today might be a good fit for you. We just love hearing from community members. So please feel free to reach out. Um, and again, I'll, I'll put some of this information in the chat so that you know how to reach us. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much, Jamie. And for our friends on the phone, I do want to highlight that NAMI helpline uh, would be your way to get involved. If you don't have a computer, but you want to join some of these support groups that Jamie's talking about, give that helpline a call and they will share with you the phone number that you can use to join these groups over the phone, even if you don't have a computer. So I'll say that number again for you. It's 410-435-2600. And that's available nine to five. 